What is going on guys? Rogue TCG here, bringing their Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG deck profile. You all voted for it, and I am bringing it to you. Here is Virtual World. Now this week, I'm doing something a little bit different. You all voted for it, and I am bringing the videos to you in an opposite order, uh, just so I have a little more time to focus on the videos that you all wanted to see the absolute most. So look forward to those two videos uh, tomorrow, and then after tomorrow, after this video's upload date. But the, today, I am bringing you Virtual World. Now, this deck has gotten a little bit of nerf ever since her ban. Uh, the deck has had a lot less to do uh, since, of course, the, the pinnacle of Burning Abyss Beatrice is gone. We can no longer do Mayakashi shenanigans. However, there is a couple of cool, neat things you are able to do in this deck, and this deck is quite budget. So if you did want to take a look at this list, I think the list is quite solid. But I don't want to keep yapping about the deck uh, concept all day, let's get into the list. So the Virtual Worlds are a series of cards released around 2021, if my memory um, serves me correctly, or 2020. And these cards are either Psychic or Worms, they're all Wind or Earths. And how they function is they are all going to have an effect in hand where they can target a Virtual World that's on field can send something from deck to graveyard of a different type as the card that you targeted, monster spell or trap, and then you can summon itself and then do something else in addition to it. The only virtual rule that we're playing that doesn't have that effect is virtual Hime Nyan Nyan. Um, but yeah, we're gonna find a little bit more about the effects as we go through the list, so that's enough yapping, let's get to the profile. Starting up the list, we're on triple of the best one, Virtual World of Mayahime Lulu. It's a Psychic Tuner, level 3. If this card's in our hand, you can target one Virtual World card we control. Send one Virtual card of a different type, Monster Spell or Trap, from our deck to the graveyard. And if we do, special summon the uh, special summon this card, and then add a Virtual World card of the third type from our deck to our hand. So how this would work is, if we, let's say we targeted a continuous spell card with Lulu's effect. With the effect, we can either send a monster or a trap card from the deck to the graveyard in order to summon the Lulu. Depending on what we sent with that first effect, it'll also depend uh, choose what we're going to be able to add off that second effect. So if we send a monster with the first effect, then we have to add a trap. But if we send a trap, then we have to add a monster. The whole situation changes if we targeted a monster initially, because now we're going to be deciding if we want to send a spell or uh, spell card to the graveyard, or send a trap card to the graveyard, and which one we need to be added to our hand. So that's like the neat part of Virtual Worlds, is almost all of them can sense up the graveyard, and all the Virtual World spell traps, for the most part, will have a beneficial graveyard effect. So it makes the strategy quite uh, competent. The only thing is, uh, we do always need to have a Virtual World card name on face up on our side of the field in order to get our virtual plays going, which is the main downside of playing this archetype. We are on, uh, and then all the virtual worlds will also have one more restriction on it. Uh, and then after we activate this effect for the rest of this turn, we can only special summon level or rank three or higher monsters. We don't use e uh, each effect of Lulu once per turn. Uh, so the thing is, we can't play links in this deck. We're locked into synchros and XCs pretty much since we're locked into levels and ranks. So if you look at the extra deck, that's why the extra deck be looking like that. Um, because we don't really have the most flexibility in terms of options. Because if we did, we would most certainly be playing the Fiendsmith cards in this deck. We are on two copies of Virtual uh, JG GG. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing them. Uh, these cards, I am uh, not very good at uh, Mandarin or Chinese, um, whichever uh, these fall into the category of. If this card is in your hand, you can target a virtual world card of control, send one virtual world card of a different type, monster spell or trap from our deck to the graveyard, and if we do, special summon this card. Then during the end phase of this turn, you can add a virtual monster from our graveyard to our hand, except for Gigi. And then for the rest of the turn, we're locked into a level or rank threes. This card is really important because uh, throughout the combo, you want to have Virtual World Lulu in your graveyard and keep it there. So at the very end, after we go Gigi, at the end of the turn, we can just add the Lulu right back to our hand so we can combo again next turn. Gigi is pretty alright. It's a level 3, which means it is a normal summonable Virtual World, which can uh, fulfill that requirement of having a Virtual name on our side of the field. So we're just playing 2 of it, although I could see a reason of playing 3. We're on 2 Virtual World Hime Nyan Nyan. This is the only one that doesn't have the in-hand effect. 
If the level 3 monster is normal or special summon to your field, while this card is in our graveyard, except during the damage step, we can special summon this card as a tuner, but banish it and leaves the field. For the rest of the turn, we're locked into level or rank 3s. If this card is banished, we can target one of our other banished cards, shuffle it into the deck, and we can lose each effect of Nyan Nyan once per turn. Keep in mind, that effect of shuffling a banished card back into the deck, that counts face down banishes. Uh, if that matters in terms of um, Kashira stuff, we can shuffle down our face down banished cards, so recursion is pretty available in this deck. That's why we're only really playing one of each of the extra deck cards, since we can all banish them and then, you know, keep recurring them if we actually really need to with our Nyan Nyan. We're on triple copies of Virtual World Roshi Lao Lao. It is a sick psychic tuner. If this card's in our hand, we can target one Virtual World card we control, send one Virtual World card with a different type, monster spell or trap from our deck to the graveyard, and if we do, special summon this card. Then we can special summon a Virtual World monster from our graveyard in defense position with a different name than the card sent to graveyard, but to get its effects, and then we're locked into level or rank threes. This card's quite good for making our Synchro plays or XC's plays, depending on what we have available to us in the graveyard to be reborning. But it also allows us to flood our uh, field with bodies, and bodies that are really useful since Lalau is a tuner, allowing us to access stuff like Crimson Dragon, or making it the world's easiest Shen Shen. And then for our last Virtual World monster, we're on a triple copies of Virtual World Kirin Lili. This is a 6 Earth Worm. If this card's in our hand, we can target one Virtual World card we control. Send one Virtual World card of a different type monster spell or trap from our deck to the graveyard, and if we do, special summon this card. Then we can send a virtual world card from a third type from our deck to the graveyard. So unlike Lulu, where Lulu sends one and then adds one, Lili's just going to send two. So whatever we target, we're just not going to be able to send that type of card to the graveyard. Otherwise, we send one and one. And once we get, uh, we already know why we want to be sending monsters to the graveyard because of our Nyan Nyan's graveyard float effect. But we also have other beneficial cards to be sent to the graveyards, at least for spells and traps, once we get to our King Long, or Ching Long rather. We're on triple copies of Virtual World City Kowloon. We can place a Virtual World Gate directly from our deck in our face of spell trap zone, then apply one of the following effects. We're never really going to be applying any effects other than, like, you know, the stat buff, maybe, or maybe the send top three cards of our deck to the graveyard, but we're never going to be playing four, uh, mostly because four do not exist right now. Um, so, unless we're doubling up on uh, Qinglong, we're not going to be able to, you know, get that fourth effect. Although, we might be able to get a attack bonus or a free, a free little Dante-like effect. We're on triple copies of Virtual Gate Ching Qinglong. Uh, this card's quite good. We can banish uh, a virtual card from our graveyard, target uh, one face-up monster on the field, and negate its effects until the end of the turn, even if this card leaves the field. Really great, just negate effect makes going second a lot easier, especially since we're always dumping monsters whenever we have the opportunity. We can banish this card from our graveyard, add one virtual monster from our deck to our hand, but then we have to send one card from our hand to the graveyard. Also, really great graveyard effect. Being able to unbrick our hand, putting cards that we want in graveyard in the graveyard is fantastic. King Long is great, and this is a great card we want to be sending to the graveyard all the time during our combo, or even we want to be going out of our way to send it with a card like Foolish Burial Goods. We're on one copy of Virtual Gate Zhan Wu. During the battle phase, if we control another Virtual Gate, we can target one phase of monster on the field, change its battle position. During our main phase, we can banish this card from our graveyard, target a Virtual World monster in our graveyard, but special summon it, of it negate its effects, and then send one card from our hand to the graveyard. We can lose each effect of Zhan Wu once per turn. We're mostly going to be using this for a, that reborn effect, being able to get an extra extender, since it's very easy to get our spells and traps into the graveyard in this archetype. That's the primary use of it, although the battle phase thing is interesting to say the least it's not very good really but the graveyard effect it kind of makes up for it and then lastly for our virtual cards we're on two copies of virtual gate chuche it is a continuous trap we can target one face of card in the field shuffle two of our banished virtual World cards with different names from each other into the deck and then destroy that card during the main phase we can banish this card from our graveyard target one virtual World card we control either increase or decrease its level or rank by three until the end of the turn and that is a hard once per turn per effect uh this card is really good being able to uh have a dryden just accessible whenever as long as it's face up on the field is great the fact that kowloon places it face up meaning it's immediately accessible on your either turn one or if you're going second you're going second turn one um it makes this card quite strong and the level modulation allows you to do cheeky little plays in order to access cards that you typically weren't really supposed to access 
But that's it for our Virtual World main deck cards. It is a little bit of a heftier engine, put out a 22 card main deck slot in. Uh, but now let's go to our uh, side engines or non-engine cards. Run two copies of Foolish Burial Goods in order to send Chu Che, King Long, or uh, Jean Wu to the graveyard, whichever one we need in any given moment. One copy of Pot of Prosperity. We're never really going to be using our full extra deck, and we need to be seeing our virtual worlds, so Pot of Prosperity is a really good tool to dig for those. We're on triple copies of Emergency Teleport. Lulu and Yan Yan are both psychic, Yan Yan being the better one to fetch off Emergency, te emergency Teleport because it is a virtual world name that we don't want to have in hand. So then we're on triple e tele because it's also not once per turn. So it's a really great way for us to flood materials onto the board. And we're also playing a ghost ogre, a uh, very small ghost ogre package in here in order to even use e tele as interaction. If we open like two e tellies, we can use one as a starter and one as interaction on our opponent's turn. We're on the speed roid engine. We're on triple terra top and one speed roid Taka Tom Borg. Uh, these are wins, so it plays in our archetype. And we're mostly going to be using these in order to get access to our Xyz Armor Engine, being uh, Xyz Armor Torpedo and Fortress, as, long, as well as Full Armor Dark Knight Lancer, as well as giving us access to Virtual Names, being able to make Virtual World Shell Zha Zha in a pinch if we really need the ability to get a Virtual World on our side of the field, and we have to rely on Terra Top to do so. We're on triple copies of Dominus Purge, the Dominus that you have not heard of, uh, or at least if you have, you haven't seen it being played, really. If your opponent controls a card, you can activate this card from your hand. When a card or effect is activated, it includes an effect that adds a card from the deck to your hand to get the effect. And, if you, and then if you have a trap in your graveyard, destroy that card. If you have activated this card from your hand, you cannot activate the effects of dark water and fire effects for the rest of the duel. Uh, there is only one card in this entire list that this locks us out of, and it's just a card that I think is very cute, which is the reason why I included it. But otherwise, this card is quite good in Virtual World since you are typically not running Dark, Fire, or Water effects. Uh, so, yeah, this card is quite good. It's like a one-time Droll of Lockbird, Droll and Lockbird, and since we are playing trap cards that want to be in our graveyard, very frequently we are going to be able to get that pop effect online as well. We're on two copies of Ghost Ogre that I previously mentioned when talking about Emergency Teleport. This card is quite good in the current meta because it's quite good against Centurion, as well as just random continuous traps and spells. Uh, it can be good against Virtual World, funny enough, uh, if it's placed very well. And then we're on two copies of Triple Tactics Talents and then one copy of Full Armor Xyz because we are playing the Xyz Armor Package. In the extra deck, let's talk about our Xyz monsters first. We're on one copy of Bamboozle and Gossip Shadow. This is like a jank ass monster negate, but it replaces, uh, instead of negation, it replaces the monster's effect to change it to both players draw a card, uh, which can be useful and does have its time and place. Also really good for playing around Nibiru the Primal Being. Um, so if we do think our opponent is holding onto that, we can make this early on in our turn with the Terra Top engine, which is another reason why this is here, because it's an early Nibiru uh, card. We're on one copy of Xyz Armor Torpedo. Uh, ideally, we just make this a Terra Top Attack and Tomborg. We activate it, attach to draw a card, rank up our Xyz Armor Fortress on top, and then detach one off the fortress to grab our full armor to Xyz. Uh, that's the idea behind that. Uh, Jaja ja also has some cute battle protection. Uh, and then the previously mentioned Xyz Armor Fortress. We're on um, our Fiend Sinus staple, Constellar Ptolemy M7. This card's quite good in this deck since we can grab back our monsters that we sent to the graveyard with cards like our Li Li and Lao Lao. Even if we haven't reborn them with our Lao Lao, we're able to add them back to hand. And it's a very cute way we're able to get back into having Lulu access in hand. And then we're on the one copy of Full Armor Dark Knight Lancer for our Full Armor Xyz package. For our Synchros, we are on one Stardust Charge Warrior in order to draw a card and to just be a little uh, way to access our sixes if we only have threes at the moment. We're on one copy of Silvera, Wolf Tamer of the White Forest. Uh, this is a new include. Uh, this is a level six Spellcaster Synchro Tuner. So it's one of the few uh, level sixes that are Synchros that are actually tuners in this deck. Um, this card on summon just flips all monsters your opponent controls face down. Uh, that's the whole purpose of it. It's just a Book of Eclipse that we have accessible in our extra deck and makes going second really easy because we just make this to force out any negations our opponent has. If they do negate and they don't destroy it, it's a tuner. And if they don't negate it, well, shit, all their monsters are face down. So makes it pretty easy to clean up from that position. 
We're on one copy of Virtual Beast Juju. Uh, this card is just kind of an asshole. It kind of is, is very sticky because it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects while you have two or more monsters in the graveyard of the same type and attribute, uh, but with different names. And also allows us to be a form of removal, uh, being targeted but non destruction removal. We're on one copy of Golden Cloud Beast Malong. This is our other six tuner. Uh, when it's summoned, we can increase or decrease the level by one, uh, not especially the most relevant in this deck. The main reason we're playing this is just to be like a different version of Stardust Charge Warrior, where if this card is sent to the graveyard, we can target a face-up card our opponent controls and bounce it to their hand. A uh, really great way to uh, remove floodgates, uh, but otherwise this is just kind of a pivot tool and it does not have to be included if you do not want to play it. The extra deck is pretty um, fluid for you to play around with just because there's a lot of different options. Right, we're playing Cloud Castle in this list. Um, the idea behind Cloud Castle is you want to be a make Shen Shen, and then you want to use the Shen Shen in order to make a Crimson Dragon. And then you want to make a Cloud Castle, bring back the Shen Shen from before, and then you can use Crimson Dragon to turn Cloud Castle into Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, and Fist by putting it back in the extract and giving us access to that again. That is the reason why we are only on one copy of Virtual World QB Shen Shen, because if, we ban if it gets banished, we can access it via our Nyan Nyan, otherwise we're able to reborn it with our Cloud Castle or with its own effect. Uh, speaking of Shen Shen, Shen Shen is like a Macro Cosmos, but kind of janky. Any card sent from the field to the graveyard is banished instead. That's the first line of text on this card. Um, it's only from field, so it won't stop completely stop cards like Droplet. It won't stop cards like Foolish. So it isn't quite a Herald of the Arc Light or a Macro Cosmos full on. But this card can be quite annoying for certain decks. And also it's quite sticky because it also has the effect where uh, when your monster declares an attack, you're trying to banish a card to its owner's graveyard. And during the main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish two other monsters from your graveyard, different original types and attributes, to just summon itself from the graveyard. It doesn't banish itself and leaves the field, so it's going straight back to graveyard where it can summon itself again next turn. We're on the previously mentioned one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. This is just spot negation that is like we can situationally access if we do that Cloud Castle play that I mentioned previously. And then lastly, we're on one copy of Psychic and Punisher in order to kill our opponents into the sun if we get put into our disadvantageous spot. But that's going to be about it for the deck profile. Thank you all so much for watching, if you still are, and I will be seeing you all later. Thank you to my one member, thank you Ari, and if you want to become a member, check out the very end of our videos, but that's about it. Thank you again for watching, if you still are. Bye bye! Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you wanted to talk to more Yu-Gi-Oh! players like yourself, I would highly recommend checking out our Discord server. Link is going to be in the description as well as the QR code on screen. We do talk somewhat frequently about Yu-Gi-Oh! and the current meta, so I would really enjoy to see you there. As well as we do recently now have channel memberships available on our YouTube channel. Where we have three different tiers we have super supporter at two dollars a month where you get loyalty badges emojis guaranteed comment responses a shout out at the end of every video as well as access to the members only discord channel where you get early sneak peeks at future videos there is the giga supporter at five dollars a month where you have early access to all new videos about a day or two before they go up as well as all the previous offers and for $15 a month, we do have our final tier, which is going to be Femboy Fanatic. You get a guaranteed customized video every single month, as well as one hour of my time. Could be for anything you'd like. You want a duel? Absolutely. You want me to help build the deck? Absolutely. You want to play some Hell Divers? Sure. I'll do anything for an hour once a month. But supporting does help me out quite a lot, and it does help me produce all of these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Bye-bye.